What's going on everyone? John Nazaz from The Elite here. Today's video is going to focus on setting up a Blue Yeti microphone for the first time. Before we get started with the video, I just want to let you know that I'm re-recording this part of the video because a change of plans happened, so during the video you may see me wearing different clothing as I recorded this on a different day. And to give you a quick rundown of how this video is going to work, basically the start of the video is going to be the quick explanation of how to get the Blue Yeti set up for those who just want to get in here, get it set up and go. And for anyone who has any questions about particular details and steps, you can simply look in the timestamps in the description down below and skip to the part where you feel like you need more information. So I'm going to stop talking and why don't we go ahead and get right into the quick explanation. Step 1. Plug in the device into a USB slot. Step 2. On the back of the microphone, set the gain knob to zero and set the appropriate polar pattern. For live streaming, I recommend the cardioid polar pattern. Step 3. Position the microphone to where it'll be during your broadcast. Make sure to position and angle the front of the mic so that's pointed towards your mouth. You can use the blue logo as a reference to where the front of the microphone is located. Also, make sure the mute button is lit up solid and not blinking. Step 4. Open the Windows Sound Control Panel. To do this, right-click the speaker icon in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, select Open Sound Settings, and on the right-hand side, select Sound Control Panel. Step 5. Click the Recording tab at the top and scroll down the list to find your Blue Yeti device. Select your device and click the Properties button below. Step 6. Click the Levels tab and set your volume to 50. Now click the Advanced tab, and under Default Format, select the sample rate which best matches your default sound device's supported sample rate. Click OK at the bottom when finished. Step 7. In OBS, go to your settings and click the Audio tab on the left. Under General, make sure your sample rate is the same as both your Blue Yeti and your default playback device. Under Devices, click the drop-down menu next to the first Mic Auxiliary Audio option and choose your Blue Yeti device. Under Advanced, make sure that Disable Windows Audio Ducking is selected. From here, you can click OK to confirm your settings. And finally, Step 8. Use the decibel meter located in the OBS mixer to help gain stage your microphone. Do this by speaking as you normally would on stream and turn up the gain knob on the mic until the signal is loud but does not clip. Your Blue Yeti is now ready for use. Okay, so this is the part of the video where I start going into some more detail about some of the steps. So in step one, you simply got to plug the microphone into the USB. On the bottom side of the microphone, there is a USB connector where you plug the small end of the USB cable into and plug the big end into the PC itself anywhere that is best available for you. It is a plug and play device, which means that once you plug it in, Windows is going to automatically recognize it as a device. You won't need to install a driver, so it should work right out of the box. And honestly, that's really all I need to know about step one. Now with step two, of course, I'm just going to flash a picture on the screen to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about with the back of the microphone. Uh, you'll have two different knobs on the back. One lets you set the polar pattern of the microphone, which is a setting that allows you to change the way that the microphone picks up audio. And there was also a gain knob on it, which adjusts the volume of the preamp, which is built inside of the microphone. I'm going to go into a little more detail later about what that gain knob kind of means when we get into different settings. But um, it's, it's going to be pretty important for making sure you get good sound out of this microphone. I generally recommend that when you start setting it up that you set the gain knob to zero. So that way you, you don't have to worry about having the volume too high and then possibly like, you know, surprising yourself when you're doing a recording or something or having it too loud. It's just a good idea to start with any sort of microphone or preamp and starting it with the volume set to zero and then turning the volume up to where you need it after things are set up. But getting back to the polar patterns, this microphone has four different polar patterns. And what's interesting about this mic to me is that it has one unique feature that I don't see on mics too often. Now looking at the back of the microphone at the different polar patterns, starting from the left, you've got the stereo polar pattern. This is the unique feature I was talking about. Not a lot of mics usually have this. And what this means is that it's picking up audio on two different sides of the microphone. And according to this image that's provided in the instruction manual, if you're looking at the front of the microphone, the audio is being picked up on the left and right sides of the microphone. What's interesting that this is going to record the audio in stereo as opposed to mono like most mics normally do. What this means is that you're going to have somewhat of like a panning effect whenever you're speaking on a certain side of the microphone. I suspect that this type of setting might be the least practical for most of you out there, although I'm sure that some of you might find a use for it for something. Uh, for streaming, this is not the setting that you're probably going to want to use. Moving to the right from there, you've got the omnidirectional setting. What this means is that the microphone is going to pick up audio at equal volume and tone all around the microphone. So it doesn't matter if you're talking in the front of the mic, the side of the mic, or the back of the mic. 
It's going to pick up audio the same regardless of where you're talking into it. This might sound like a great solution overall for everyone, but this introduces one other problem. Because it's picking up audio from all directions, it's going to do a poor job of canceling background noise. It's even going to be picking up reflections bouncing off the walls and coming back into the microphone at a greater volume, which is not going to make your mic sound ideal for a streaming environment. This isn't a bad solution if you have a bunch of people in a room that are sharing one microphone and you want to pick up everybody that could be a good solution for that but if you're just if it's just you using the microphone i don't suggest using omnidirectional onto the setting that i recommended in the steps initially the cardioid pattern is probably the pattern you're going to be setting this to what this means is that the audio is going to be most pronounced when you're talking into the front of the microphone if you were to speak into the mic from behind it it would do a poor job of picking up your voice it would be very quiet and it would probably sound echoey. For any streamer, I would recommend that you set this microphone to cardioid and make sure that the front of the mic is pointing in the direction of your mouth. This will make sure that you get the fullest tone going into the microphone regardless of where you position it. Of course, the proximity effect does apply with this microphone, but we're not going to get too deep into that today. I have other videos that I will link down below that you can check out to learn more about that. And the last polar pattern on the microphone on the far right is the bi-directional pattern. So the bi-directional pattern, what that means is that you basically have sound being picked up from the front and the back of the microphone. This is not a bad setting to use if you're in a podcast setting where you have to share one microphone and it's just two people. This way that you can kind of position the mic between the two of you and you could both be talking into the microphone at a distance and then you might get decent sound from the both of you. But again, this may not be ideal for everyone, especially if it's just one person streaming. So I won't necessarily recommend it, but if you're in a pot, like I said, a podcasting environment or if you're in an environment where you're sharing a mic between two people, you could take advantage of this to try to get both people picked up in the audio. And please be sure to keep in mind that these last three polar patterns that I mentioned are running in mono, whereas the stereo pattern is running in stereo. There is a big difference between the two, and I will demonstrate that later once we get to talking about how to set up the microphone in OBS. <laughs> Now for step three, I mentioned to position the microphone to where it, it will be during your broadcast. And the only reason I mentioned doing this is because when you get to the sound check portion of things, your microphone will be ready and set up. You don't necessarily need to do this step here. I just felt like that that was a good spot to mention to just set up the microphone. It just, I don't know, get you ready for the steps ahead. But like I mentioned in step two, you want to make sure that the logo is pointing in the direction of your mouth. So make sure that you find a spot in your desk where the microphone's out of the way but it's picking up your voice at a decent volume and tone that is acceptable to you. And just make sure that the front of the mic is pointed towards you. I see a lot of people, for whatever reason, they'll take the microphone and they'll point the top of it towards them. That is not how you're supposed to talk into it. The front of the mic, point it towards you like this. You'll get the best possible audio sound from that. Even at an angle like this, like I'm doing right here, that's fine. It doesn't have to be straight on like this. But even though you, you might get a pretty good tone this way, you can you could always offset it off to the side like this. Just make sure it's pointed towards your mult. I promise you, you're going to get a better sound that way. All right, so this is the part where we get a little more technical. And this is the, the, getting these settings right are going to help you out. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm at the desktop here and I'm going to go down to the lower right hand corner. I'm going to right click on the speaker icon. If you don't see the speaker icon here, you can click this little arrow. And it'll probably pull up and it'll probably be right in this little tray right here. But if you do see it, right click it, choose open sound settings, and you will open up the other sound settings for Windows. You want to go over to the sound control panel on the right hand side, and it'll bring up this window here. Now you'll see uh, you'll see playback and recording. If you, if you didn't know this, you probably noticed that the Blue Yeti has a headphone jack on the bottom, which means that you can use the Blue Yeti as a sound driver for your audio. It's not necessary if you already have a sound device that you're using for like your headset, for example. As a matter of fact, I'd probably recommend trying to avoid using the Blue Yeti as a main sound device. But in this case, you don't have to worry about how you set up um, the Blue Yeti here in this instance. I've noticed that right here, it's set as my default communications device. I can just change that right now. I apologize for that. The main thing that we want to concern ourselves with here is the recording tab. Now under the recording tab, if we scroll down and we look for the device, it'll probably be labeled microphone, but you'll see it's called the Yeti Stereo Microphone. And we want to go ahead and click here and we can either choose properties or we can right click it and we can choose properties. Same thing goes to the same window. Now there are two tabs here that we want to concern ourselves with. First off, we want to concern ourselves with the levels tab. This is a very key thing that you need to set up with the Yeti. And to try to explain it, what this is, is this is the digital volume of the input that is coming from the microphone itself. This is not from the preamp side. If you were to set this to 100, you'd be getting essentially the line in signal of the microphone. And this kind of happens like after the preamp side of things. So the mic will still work, but it's not going to work as intended. You're not going to get the right sound out of it. 
The Blue Yeti mic has a built-in preamp on it, and that's what the gain knob controls. If you have this set too high, and if I demonstrate this in OBS, you can see that right now, the mic audio is still being picked up. I have the mic audio set all the way down right now, and it's still picking it up. And you'll notice that when I turn the volume down, that the volume goes down pretty considerably, but it's still picking it up. However, when I turn it up to 100, it's really loud. That means that the line in signal is going in really hot. We don't want that because it's going to end up just not creating the desired result sound-wise. You might get a lot of background noise, you might get a lot of hissing, and it's not going to sound good. So setting this to 50 is a good middle ground. You can set this lower if you want to because most of the volume is going to be handled on the microphone itself by adjusting the gain knob. I found that setting it to 50 seemed to be acceptable. You can go ahead and play around with this to see if you get better results by setting it lower. I actually encourage that you do that, experiment with your sound. But that's all you really need to know about the levels tab. Just make sure that it's not set up to 100, set it to about 50 at the highest, and then play around with it to see if you get better results by turning that down lower. Moving over to the advanced tab, this is going to be important. Depending on your sound device, you're going to want to set the sample rate to a certain setting. And in this case, uh, the device that I typically use is set at uh, 48,000 hertz. I have a video about XLR setups that explains sample rate. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but I'll leave a link to that video down in the description below if you want to learn more about that. But the main thing that you need to know about it is that you want to make sure that your sample rate matches across all of your devices so that you don't run into any issues with perhaps your microphone coming in sounding like uh, slower or faster. You want to just make sure that your sample rate is in sync across all your devices. And you typically have to check your playback device to make sure that it's set properly. In this case, you just click this drop down menu and you can choose which sample rate you want. There's only two settings with this microphone. It goes to 16 bit 44.1K or 44,100 Hertz. It also goes at 48,000 Hertz or 48K. My device is set to 48,000. OBS also supports 48,000 as well. So I'm going to set it to that. And to kind of double check the device that I have, my default device, I'll go to my main default device here and click properties and go to the same thing. This way you can check to see what your device is currently set to. Right now mine's set to 16 bit, 48,000 hertz. I'm okay with that. I'm gonna leave that as is. So one more time, like I mentioned, make sure your sample rates match across all your devices. It'll just make your life a lot easier. Make sure to click OK when you're all set. Now referencing step seven, we're getting to our OBS settings. This is pretty simple to set up, but uh, like I said, if you had done the previous steps, this will be a little easier to set up. You might be a little clueless if you didn't know otherwise, but uh, what I want to do is I want to go into the settings tab over here, and I want to head over to the audio tab. Right at the top, you'll see that it says to 48K. I already set this up, but it'll see that if I change it, it's going to request that I reset it if I want the settings to take effect. So when you change the setting, if you need to, uh, make sure that you reset OBS before you continue forward. I've also made sure that my channels are set to stereo. If you're using a stereo headset, this is definitely the ideal setting that you're gonna wanna use. And when it comes to devices, I do this thing that I have this issue with OBS where I need to set both a default and the device that I'm gonna be using in order to pick up Discord. It's a weird bug that exists that for reasons that I don't understand. But um, for some of you, this may not even be the case and you probably won't have to worry about it. But if you wanna be safe just in case, I'll set my first device, my first desktop audio device to default, then I'll set my desktop audio number two to whatever device I plan on using for the stream for picking up my desktop audio and my Discord. And as for the mic auxiliary setting, you're gonna be setting whatever microphone you plan to be using on stream, whichever mic that you plan to be picked up on stream so that the audience can hear you. In this case, it's the, it's the microphone Yeti stereo microphone setting. That's the one I'm going to want to choose there. Once you click OK, you're going to see three things pop up here. I'll just unhide so you can see that three different uh, settings popped in. And some tutorials, they'll tell you to go ahead and add a source. Generally, you don't need to do that because if you set your devices properly like that, you won't have to add a source. They'll be included across all of your sources entirely. There are other reasons for adding audio sources into your scenes, but we're not going to get into that today. For now, I'm just going to mute and hide desktop audio too since I don't really need it. And we're going to just focus on the mic here. Now you'll see that at the moment, I've got uh, audio being picked up from Windows or from the microphone itself. I'll just go ahead. You can see I'm, I'm just tapping the microphone and we're getting some volume, volume out of that. Now one last setting I want to bring to your attention in the audio tab is this one under the advanced section. Disable Windows audio ducking. This is a weird audio problem that I see some people have, not just with the Blue Yeti, but with like their, their headset microphones, all sorts of different microphones, where uh, Windows will automatically adjust the volume of your microphone over time as sort of like a, a ducking feature so that like you can like hear desktop audio better or something like that. I don't know. Sometimes it just bothers and interferes with some people. So like 
I recommend that you have this setting enabled. I believe it's enabled by default anyway, but if for whatever reason you see that it's unchecked, make sure that you check it off so that way you don't run into that issue where your volume is gradually getting lower and lower over time and you have no idea why it's happening. I'll go ahead and click OK. Moving on to the last step here, this is the part where you need to gain stage your microphone. Gain staging is the process of where you set the volume of your, your preamps or your microphones or whatever your inputs are to be at a point where the signal is coming in loud and clear, but is not clipping. For those who don't understand what clipping is, clipping is when, if you were, for example, to look at this decibel meter, the signal gets to a point where it reaches zero dB or goes above the zero dB meter, and then you start to get this sort of staticky distortion that's just unpleasant for people to listen to. And that's what you need to try to avoid when you're gain staging your microphone. If you've done all the steps up to this point in the, in the exact order that I showed you, then this step should be pretty simple to do. Once you have the microphone set in the proper position, that you want it where it's going to be and it's pointing towards your mullet in the right direction all you have to do is turn up the gain knob on the back pay attention to the decibel meter you can see that in obs studio they have little um they have little number markers which is very helpful in streamlabs obs unfortunately they don't have these tick marks so we're just going to have to reference the color meter ideally what you want to do is get the gain up as high as you can before you see clipping and talk into the microphone as you normally would on stream in this case i'm just going to turn it up until we get to a volume that sounds pretty good. I like to get it right in the red. You'll hear a lot of people say that you want to avoid the red, but that's not ideal. In this case, I had the gain almost all the way up. It's up really high. So I'm going to just back that off just a little bit. And it's probably because the microphone's pretty far away from me. If the mic is a lot closer to you, you may not have to turn this up quite as much. But right about there is pretty good. Um, I can do things after that to kind of like... I can like add some uh, some filters to kind of improve the volume of the microphone if I need to, or I can uh, add some compression or add a limiter so it doesn't clip. But you can see now I'm at a point that regardless of how loud, I, loud I'm speaking, I'm not clipping and utilizing the preamp in the microphone to boost the signal as opposed to the digital boosting of the input in Windows. This just generally leads to a much more pleasant sound and is largely noise free. And if I can give one last tip, make sure that you have this button not blinking. Otherwise, you'll see that you get no audio. So make sure that this is a solid red while you're talking into it, so that way you don't feel dumb when you realize that the mic was muted the whole time. And if there's one last tip I can give about gain staging a microphone is that you make sure you distance the mic properly to get the best possible sound. That's probably gonna be the biggest influence on what your mic is going to sound like on stream. I know some of you don't like to have microphones on screen because you've you feel that it's tacky looking. However, you're generally going to get a better audio result by bringing the mic closer to your mouth. You'll be able to have an easier time removing background noise, uh, removing keyboard presses and all that stuff, and using a gate to kind of help clean up your audio. And that's why you see so many people have their microphones on screen like I do. The only advice I can give you about distancing this mic is that it's not like a dynamic microphone where you can have it super close to you. I would generally make the rule to go no closer than about one or two fifths away. That's a good metric. You know, we all have different size hands, but it's a pretty safe metric regardless of the size of your hands. You know, if you have the mic that far away, you don't have to worry about potentially uh, blowing out the diaphragm in the microphone, which can happen with condenser mics. Again, my other videos linked down below helps explain this pretty well. As long as you follow that guideline, your microphone should handle it just fine. And that just about wraps up the video, guys. I hope it was helpful for you all. And if it was, please be sure to like, share, and comment down below. Also, be sure to leave some feedback on the video. Let me know what you thought of it, if it was helpful or not, as well as if there are any improvements that I can make to the videos in the future. I appreciate you all taking the time to watch this video. Thank you very much. And have a pleasant day, everyone.